have one of the main developers of what is most likely your video player. So please, everyone, welcome François Cartoni. So uh, I'm one of the, um, now one of the oldest developer uh, working on the project. Uh, I joined uh, nearly 10 years ago. Uh, I mostly work on uh, Muxers and Demuxer. I mean, I take everything in and usually sort things inside and put things out. It means I, I see a lot of crappy content, crappy files and crappy formats. Uh, I also work on decoders, adaptive streaming. Uh, I worked a lot of, on subtitles. Uh, and uh, I, uh, v VLC is a project which is uh, run by Vidolan, which is a French uh, non-profit organization. Uh, we are quite small. We have uh, more and more members, but we are still 40 members right now. Um, we survive with donations, uh, uh, which is used to buy gears, hardware, rain servers. Uh, we also sponsor people to travel and for legal stuff. And every year uh, we run uh, what we call the Videoland Dev Days, which is our own multimedia world conference uh, for two days. So this year it was in Paris. Uh, we had 150 people. It was quite successful. Uh, if you want to come next year, this is totally free. Uh, even restaurant, you can come. Uh, you're welcome if you're really interested in multimedia, if you want to meet the world multimedia community, uh, including FFmpeg guys, that's the place to be. Uh, we manage a lot of projects. Uh, not only VLC, we have uh, all the libraries for decryption. Uh, we have a world set of decoder from, from uh, MPEG-2 uh, to uh, HEVC. Uh, we also currently, we are also currently building uh, a new decoder uh, for AV1. I will introduce it later. Uh, this is a big challenge. Uh, so I, I will speak a bit about 3.0, which you may already have on your desktop. This was the first time we did a unified release among all platforms, all f the same features on, every, on all the same device. Uh, on every device, sorry. And that's the release we did enable hardware decoding by default. I will talk a bit about this. We had 360 video, uh, Ambisonic, 3D audio. Uh, we wrote a wall uh, adapted stack for HLS, for Dash, for smooth streaming. Uh, we enabled HDMI pass through for the audio. Uh, we integrated HTTP2, uh, that's our own stack. And uh, one of the most wanted feature, which delayed the release by uh, almost two years, was Chromecast. So uh, we, since the release, we had uh, quite uh, a lot of downloads uh, to update, but we, we still uh, are pushing uh, regular updates. So uh, there are still people running 2.0, but not that much. Uh, but I, I told you, uh, we did enable hardware decoding by default. So, did anyone uh, see any difference in 3.0 compared to 2.0? Maybe you did. So hardware decoding is fast. Uh, we can do 8K, 8K decoding at 60 FPS with really uh, few CPU. We can also do that on 360 video. Uh, we can do that also on uh, mobile devices. That's not a problem. Uh, what's the purpose of hardware decoding is to uh, 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 first decode, but also render or scale the picture, do uh, effect if you want to apply some fancy effect or de or whatever you want with VLC, 
this is a, 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 an effect filter. But if you are playing HDR content on non-HDR screen, you also want to do tone mapping. So you can do this on the CPU side or on the GPU side. But if only uh, one feature is supported on one side and you want to uh, pass the data from one domain, from the CPU domain to the GPU, which is the hardware domain, it has a big cost. You want to avoid it. So here are some, uh, here's, here's some benchmark uh, we had compared to some other players uh, early this year. Uh, so VLC, uh, you can see that VLC does it uh, entirely uh, in uh, GPU. Uh, this is fully optimized. We only consume uh, on Windows for HDR content, uh, 4K HDR, 7% of CPU. And we don't even use fully the GPU. So that can be really efficient. But on the 4K uh, picture, uh, you have to manage blending, rescaling, which means you adapt the picture to your screen. Uh, you also want uh, to render subtitles. So the larger uh, your picture is, is, the higher resolution you have, the higher the resolution you want uh, with your subtitles. Uh, the more data you have to process, uh, the more complex it is. So you can do uh, parallelization, SMD. Uh, it helps. Uh, it did help, uh, but for 4K, um, it starts not to be enough. So we need to move everything into shaders and GL buffers, which means we need to move to write everything in uh, OpenGL textures, in 3D textures and uh, do every computation, transformation, effects in uh, GPU shaders. So hardware acceleration is fast, efficient, and this is necessary for 4K resolutions and above. But since we released 3.0, um, we had some kind of user feedback. <laughs> And uh, that was not really expected. We did a lot of intensive tests, but seems we did not do enough. So people did lose video or had uh, hiccups on video or just had blocky video or really strange things and people didn't understand. My desktop actually started Yeah, I pretty know why it does. So. <laughs> Most, most reasons is you, you can have a black screen, the black screen syndrome. Uh, you have the green screen, which is means mostly this is half decoded. Or you can have on some devices, some mobile devices, a reboot. This is really nice. Uh, you can buy an iPhone if you want. Uh, most of the issues are, are related to drivers. They pushed drivers and they are not finished for decoding and of course, uh, uh, shit happens. Uh, and people, of course, usually update their uh, Windows XP desktop really often. So mostly this is the reason of the issues. So what we had to deal is to fix some issues and create some blacklist from some driver versions which is quite time consuming because you need to identify and usually the user is not even able to provide you in the information. So uh, we need a lot of hardware, to, a lot more hardware than before to prepare a release. It's not as easy as just testing algorithm on CPU with uh, AVX extension or 3D MMX. So uh, hardware has some limited capabilities sometimes. Sometimes you can do 10 bits decoding in 4K, sometimes you can't. Sometimes this is advertised at, as 10 bits capabilities, but it doesn't work. This is some Intel uh, i5 Skylake, for example. Uh, and you can also have performance degradation uh, because you are using filters. This is really confusing for the user. Uh, this is really hard to explain to the user. 
Um, and this is pretty bad buzz sometimes for PLC because users are really angry against us, but anyway. How do I also have limits? Uh, by default, uh, all the codecs have defined profile, which means usually this is a resolution, a bit depth. Uh, but also uh, macro block per second, which translates into a frame rate. So you usually can scale up to your maximum resolution to 30 or 60 frames per second. And you can play back faster on the legacy resolution, but sometimes it's not the case. And we also have feedbacks of users which like to use VLC for some feature, like fast, fast uh, forward videos. And when they enable fast forward, it stopped working. They got blocky video, black screens, and VLC is shit, of course, because of this. Just because the hardware can't provide the, the feedback for, for this use. And uh, the, before the hardware switch, it was easy. Your desktop was slower because your CPU was 100%. But when your GPU is 100%, you don't feel it. This is really, really difficult. Uh, and if you want to do encoding, uh, then you also have uh, quality problems. This is getting, getting me solved in the latest uh, chips, but usually get lower quality by using hardware encoding. So if you use the transcoding capabilities of VLC, uh, then you, you, we can't really use it uh, for this. Uh, and VLC wants uh, to target, uh, VLC is a pipeline, a video processing pipeline. So we can't use a SDK. We, we can't feed a, fi a file and expect the video to be decoded. We just want to feed the frames to the decoder and get the frame back and do whatever we want and then render it. So we can't use the MIDI SDK. And uh, there are also some API like VA API or the Media Codec API on mobile, where you, with the same API, just because of the chipset and the firm which implemented it, you have totally different behavior and totally different bug, which means also we need more devices. And there is some rendering interaction bugs, uh, depending if you are using OpenGL to display your video, or if you are do using uh, direct, free, uh, direct rendering on 11 on Windows, or uh, if you are targeting some HDR content, um, this is mostly because we don't use the world SDK pipeline. And also some decoders are pretty bad. Uh, they are minimalistic, uh, and they have to be uh, driven by hand, uh, like uh, the video toolbox for Apple, uh, which is uh, one of the most uh, tough decoder to drive. Uh, you have to do, it, it, it works really well. You can feed a frame and it is decoded. But when you had the temporal, uh, the temporal things, uh, it doesn't work uh, because you have to uh, sort the frames and, uh, and uh, compute the frame order and get them in the right order and reorder them by yourself. And you have to know that they have limitation, like they didn't thought that interlacing was still existing. Um, so there is, there is many, many, many bugs to, to work around. So this is fast, efficient, necessary, but by moving everything in the GPU, is that better? Mm, yes, but this is limited. Uh, it causes a lot of problems. So because of this, we have uh, a lot of fragmentation. We have more platform to deal with. Uh, we have more SDK, uh, mostly for mobile. Now we have Android, we have iOS, and when you want to do something on Android or iOS, you have to do to use the proper tools. Uh, we can't really reuse what we are doing on desktop. Uh, and all those platforms, also, you need a native UI. Uh, you need a lot of devices for, to, to test, and you also need some different chipsets among those devices. So, we have more issues, uh, and we need more people to, to work around those issues, or more time. So, about 4.0, 
and a bit faster. Um, for the zero, we'll be codenamed as auto trick, uh, like uh, we always use disk world uh, names. Uh, we are uh, 5k commits uh, so far. Uh, usually, we have are around 15 commits uh, between each release, so it gives you a, a bit of uh, idea uh, how far we are. Uh, and this is the first time we are introducing uh, architecture changes. We are, we still have. Uh, um, until 3.0, we still had uh, uh, MPEG-2 architecture because this is initiated from the, VLC, from the first VLC project, which was streaming TS, so MPEG-2 video. Uh, and this is no longer sufficient uh, for today use. Uh, so we don't have any release date yet. Uh, expect one year, two years, we don't know. With 3.0, we had two years late and took us three years. So internally, uh, we had a playlist with, which was managing the playback, uh, uh, chaining uh, the videos and audios and everything. We are simply simplifying it. We are, we are getting rid of most of those features and we are moving everything to the UI. Uh, we wanted to be more flexible and uh, this is also a requirement for our, our users which are just using libvlc as an API. Uh, they want to be able to manage to do their own loops and do everything. So we want to move those things outside of the core. Um, we also uh, uh, introduced a new, uh, a new structure which is the input manager, uh, where we will put all the resources, the audio output, the video output, uh, uh, and which mean uh, it will also manage how they, or it reuse those resources. Uh, it allows us to also to uni unify architecture because we had some tools like VLM, which is video LAN, uh, media, uh, streaming server or things like, uh, like this, which were using VLC in a different way. So we are trying to get more coherent and have uh, something more unified uh, and easier to understand and maintain. Uh, and also uh, we try to, we will try to enable gapless playback for audio. This is a really wanted feature, uh, which is available on some, uh, on some players, but for us, this is quite hard to do because we mostly see things as a stream. We have no, we have no, no way to, to change uh, different items right now. And we are also getting rid of uh, our media library. Uh, we are rebuilding a real media library. So if you have tested the uh, Windows RT uh, builds or maybe the Apple TV things, uh, we are moving to something more uh, modern uh, where you could have some plugins to uh, import uh, your network or your streams for I don't know what which streaming platform. So it would be a, a, a great uh, advance uh, on this side because we had a huge difference between the desktop versions and the mobile version like on iOS where you could do plenty of things uh, uh, compared to the desktop. We also are reworking the clock. Uh, so as, as I've said before, uh, we have a legacy clock inherited from the MPEG-2 times, uh, which is really nice if you are a professional user and you want to respect the timings properly. Uh, so this is what we call the PCR-based clock. Uh, you have one time key which is given to you and you know this is the time for your playback, uh, which is the time you are in and you need to render your frame uh, for this time. But for some use, this is not uh, really correct. Like when you just use VLC as an audio player, 
uh, it doesn't really make sense you have a single stream and uh, when you start your playback sometimes you have some glitches yeah. if you have you are a regular VLC user sometimes you can experience this so to work around this uh, we have no choice to break the model um, so we decided to we had some workshops uh, around this and we decided to have uh, to keep a main clock on the CPU, uh, so that's your system clock, which can drift. And uh, we will uh, pick one main, one ma main or ma master clock uh, to do pacing and to to uh, choose the, the rate uh, you need to display your video. What uh, what is not nice if you don't. Uh, uh, use the audio uh, instead of if you what is the bad thing what is the bad thing which happened when you use the video instead of the audio in that case and w what happened before is that uh, when your audio doesn't play at the same speed the your audio output which means your audio sound card doesn't play at the same speed as your CPU clock, uh, your system clock, then you get frequently you have uh, glitches in your audio because uh, one goes faster than the other. So we decided to use the audio as the main clock in that case and we adapt the video to that uh, timing which is easier because the frames are separated in time. So you can't hardly notice when the user can really notice when the audio is glitching. And on those, we will plug uh, slaves uh, for second video stream or subtitles, uh, which means uh, we we get rid of all the resampling bugs on uh, some uh, desktops, and we can improve synchronization uh, of the streams. We had a lot of issue with uh, capturing desktop with audio, for example. We will also move uh, the build system to something more modern. Uh, we are moving from Auto Tools to Mason. Uh, it will help uh, us uh, to, to maintain more platform. Uh, we are also rewriting the video uh, output architecture. Uh, the main reason is mostly the hardware reasons. We need to do more things in the GPU. Uh, we also uh, will provide a, a video filter API. This is a really one hit feature uh, which was lacking in, in VLC. We, we had a, a, a plugin, uh, a plugins API, uh, which was mostly doing the job, exposing some, uh, some values and uh, codec parameters, but we never had a real, a real API for the libvlc users. So this is mainly for people doing uh, custom applications, uh, video streaming using VFC uh, and such. And on Linux, uh, we also have support for Wayland, uh, which means also we will kill the video capture on those platforms, of course, we can't. Uh, we have some projects uh, currently looking into adapting Vulkan as a video output. Uh, it's not ready yet, it's not even working yet. Uh, we're really looking into this. Uh, and on, for the Mac users, uh, we have touch part support. Uh, this is mostly a gadget, but mm, lots of people wanted this. So on the US, UI side, we're also revamping the main UI. Uh, it never has moved for many years. Uh, people are complaining about this. Uh, the bad thing is a lot of users are used to this, but we'll, we'll adapt vo this UI to get something more current across platforms. So it will mostly look like this. Uh, this is what you have on, on, on uh, iOS TV uh, that was on Windows uh, RT platforms. Um, this is modern and we also rewrite the old legacy code with a QML, uh, Qt quick if you, if you use Qt. Uh, so everything is moving uh, to uh, new standards. Um, we will also introduce a 3D support. 
So in 3.0, you, you had 360 videos, and now you, you can also play side-by-side uh, -side videos. Uh, I mean, in the codec, this is encoded side-by-side. -side. When you play it in a regular player, you, you see two, the two pictures. Uh, but it will also work uh, with 360 videos on side by side. Uh, and if we can have MVC decoder, which means this is the, uh, encoded in the, in the side data of the, of the codex, uh, we will do it. Uh, what is lacking is just to have a, a decoder. So some hardware decoder provided, some software open source decoder does not. So it's still some work on this. And uh, we are ready also for VR. So this picture is from the IBC, which is uh, a broadcaster conference, a commercial conf event in Amsterdam every year. Uh, we had a booth where we demoed the, all the devices we have, uh, even the PlayStation uh, device. Uh, so we have support for Oculus, uh, Vive, Starbreeze, uh, Windows, uh, HMDs, uh, all those kind of things. Uh, also support through OpenHMD, so uh, it opens uh, support for to most of the device. But uh, you can, you will be able to see your videos in the first person, but also as a third point of view which means we have some people which have built a virtual uh, theater in 3D and you have to pick your, your seat and watch a video from here. So this is mostly a gadget, but this is fun. And uh, we are also mostly focused on AV1. So maybe some people here have heard about this. Uh, this is uh, the next generation of open source codec. Uh, which has been uh, initiated by Mozilla into the uh, uh, Alliance for Open Media. So lots of big companies joined and developed that codec. So the previous name was uh, DALA for Mozilla. And uh, they merged it with uh, Cisco's Tor uh, codec. And they took the best features of each side and introduced some new features. So, and they built the one of the um, uh, first real open source codec, uh, which is really efficient. So this is totally patent free. Uh, they used a totally different technology, uh, not to be uh, annoyed by some uh, legacy patent from the MPEG procession, um, without royalties or so. It offers 30% uh, more cooperation. I think that's the optimal case. Uh, and hardware support is coming. Uh, you could expect it within two years, but they are already uh, making the chipset and testing things. So uh, it, it is uh, uh, going really fast. You can even test the codec uh, if on, your, on, your, on your YouTube if you want. There is some dedicated uh, YouTube uh, beta zones where you can play back AV1. And there's already some support in VSC 3.0 uh, through libAOM, which is quite slow because this was the first decoder. So to bring this codec uh, at full speed on the desktop, we need a full speed decoder. That's why I introduced uh, the David uh, decoder, uh, which is quite fast, uh, light, and works pretty well. We are finalizing it. Uh, it will be shipped with 4.0. Uh, unfortunately, uh, everyone uh, is quite slow to encode. Maybe 10 or 20 times slower than current codecs. So most of the work uh, right now is on the encoder, which holds all the, uh, the features and uh, should do the work for the codec because the decoder is a stupid part of the video encoding decoding process. This is really easy to decode. It's really hard to encode. That's the reason. Uh, on the cross Comcast side, uh, we are going to uh, enable some accelerated decode encoding uh, because right now VLC uh, Comcast support is pushing video. 
when you use Chromecast uh, uh, on other, uh, on a re with a regular application on your phone, you are pulling the video. Uh, VLC can't because this is a video player. So instead, what you are doing is you are asking the Chromecast to to come on your VLC instance and take a video that you are uh, live transcoding. So because you are encoding, you want also to accelerate this process. So we, we want to enable this. So we have some uh, encoding, uh, hardware encoding on Intel. And also user wants subtitle support, uh, which is another limitation of uh, having to push the video as a streaming in a streaming process, which means also you, you can't really push subtitles for some reason. So we are trying to find a way to work around this problem. Uh, you can burn in the subtitles, but that's not the best way to do. Um, so it will be improved uh, in 4.0. But uh, we will also have new requirements. Uh, so if you are a Windows XP user, uh, we are sorry for you. And unfortunately, that's still uh, some part of uh, our traffic on videoland.org, video uh, especially from China. Um, that uh, might be a problem for some people. So we are targeting Yosemite uh, on macOS. Uh, minimal requirement for Android will be KitKat and uh, iOS 10. Uh, there was a lot of issue with uh, iOS 9 and 8 uh, on mobile. Uh, which means we'll be able to uh, get rid of legacy code, uh, especially on the audio side, uh, and uh, have less bugs uh, and more, uh, more deterministic uh, behavior on some platform. So uh, that was what we are up to right now with 4.0. But we have some other projects on the long term. Um, those projects uh, mostly concern the security. Uh, we have heard some about some security issue about uh, around VLC this year, about some NSA exploit. Yeah, well, there's some people trying to do nasty things uh, with VLC. And uh, because the desktop is getting less and less used, you're also having less and less apl application on your desktop. So mainly you have your browser, uh, you might have a word processor, and usually you have a video uh, multimedia player. And uh, because of this, we are being targeted uh, as a high priority application. So we want to do mo module sandboxing. A module is a, might be a decoder or a demuxer. It, it just has one purpose in our, in our video pipeline stream. Uh, but doing this process is quite hard and this is quite uh, resource consuming. So that's something that currently works. We have some demos about this, but it can't run on your desktop. If this is far too slow. Uh, mostly because this is done properly. This is totally isolated and the way to exchange data between modules is really slow. Safe but slow. And we have also people trying to introduce Rust as a language for some modules. Uh, the thing is uh, Rust, uh, there's little people you know with Rust. Uh, this is pretty hype. Uh, it sounds good. Uh, but uh, if people write Rust, uh, we need people to maintain. So I think Rust will be deployed pretty slowly, uh, which means uh, at the speed that uh, the C and C++ decoder learn, learns that new language to be able to validate what others are doing. And uh, everything goes to the web. Uh, the desktop is almost dead. Everything is mobile or web. 
So uh, web plugins also are, are dead because of security <laughs> issues. And uh, VLC uh, is also expecting to move on the web for that reason. So we have uh, this project, we see VLC.js, uh, which is mostly built uh, using WebAssembly. Uh, we have a demo. Uh, you can play video, uh, you can play audio uh, in your browser. Most, it plays in Chrome. It works, you can test it. Uh, but anyway, this is still slow. Uh, but uh, WebAssembly is getting better. Uh, it gets, uh, it recently got real threading, uh, real audio output, sorry. And uh, might be doable uh, within the next years uh, with a bit more uh, uh, CPU power. Fortunately, uh, I'm at all you got here. <laughs> so, if you want uh, to hear something, maybe I, I, do I have a lot of time? Uh, five minutes, about ten minutes. Sorry. 10 minutes, yeah. Uh, your question is uh, why there is a cone? Why VSC is a cone? Maybe you have heard this story or not. Um, mainly this is just because of uh, students being drunk and uh, collecting cones <laughs> as a hobby. And uh, what's the story about VLC, uh, about VideoLAN? Uh, VideoLAN has been, uh, it was a student project in uh, the uh, Via Central Réseau, which is an uh, engineering school uh, near Paris. Uh, the guy uh, had a, a, a LAN network, which was Token Ring, if you remember that technology. And because they are students, uh, they were using their Token Ring network to play Doom. And if you know token ring, you know that token ring and doom can't really work because this is a token based. Uh, so this is pretty bad for FPS. So people were really unhappy about this and uh, they requested a new Ethernet with a network to be able to play doom, well, to be able to work, of course. Uh, but the, uh, their, uh, their school told us, yeah, uh, we would like, but we need to prove that you, it, would, it would be useful. So you need to have a project for this. So the deal is uh, find something useful to do and we will fund the project. And uh, because they had uh, one uh, satellite dish on the, on the building, uh, the idea they had is to take the feed from the satellite dish and broadcast, broadcast, is broadcast it into all the rooms of the student. So that was the beginning of the first uh, VRC streaming thing. Uh, it was working on the 386 uh, for 30 seconds, but it was enough for people to get uh, the, the funding for their new networks. And then this project evolved uh, and was, was rewritten into a full player to be able to play MPEG2. And what, that was the genesis, in fact, of the video and project. So, yeah, that's the end of my talk. Uh, if you have any question, I would be happy to, to answer you. In fact, this picture is an original picture before I was inside the video and project. So I was already doing music with cones before. <laughs> when I was there. Well, thank you. Thank you. Can you tell us more about uh, why the AV1 encoder is so slow? Why? Uh, why, why is it uh, 20 times slower than... Uh, because, oh, okay. Uh, when you want to go uh, to a next generation codec, you need to do uh, more computation in the frame. 
Like, uh, if you know how codec works, there is some direction which are uh, detected for moving the pixels and, and guessing what's the next frame and everything. Uh, mostly what next generation codec, generation codecs are doing and they are uh, increasing the number of directions and uh, the way you are also splitting uh, the blocks of uh, your videos. So when you have glitches right now you can see some blocks uh, of uh, 16 by 16 pixels. Uh, they are not. They are either using big blocks or smaller blocks and Detecting this uh, needs a lot of computation. So this is mainly the case. Uh, this is uh, a lot of lot of, lot of work, uh, including the uh, uh, going back and forth uh, because you, sometimes you you took the wrong path, and so there is a lot of optimization, and uh, it. That's mostly the reason why an encoder does all the jobs for the decoder. Uh, and this is the slowest process. And because this is a new, totally new decoder, then uh, people don't have found the right algorithm yet. Or the right S SMD code to do it. Uh, yeah, the, but if you remember H264 or, or X264, uh, 10 years ago or 5 years ago, it was really slower than now. Now you can probably do real-time encoding uh, on a really small device. Before it was, uh, if I remember correctly, in 2000 it was 6 times uh, six times the real-time. So it will, it will improve for sure, even on hardware probably. It, that also that's where the money is. If you can sell an encoder which is faster than uh, any other company encoder, then you will make money. That's why comp companies are interested in working in open source project because we can sell encoder. They are not interested in decoder. <laughs> Well, if there are no more questions, then see you in 20 minutes, I guess. Okay.